a signal that a conflict has been resolved. The women and children are happy that the men have reached an agreement. In the province of Casamance in Senegal, disputes are resolved through an age-old ritual. The men discuss the issue all day long until they find a compromise. But while some traditions remain the same, other aspects of life are seeing momentous change. It's much hotter than it used to be. There's less and less water for the fields. And there's an increasing number of illnesses that did not exist before. These villages are not poor. The people earn a living by raising cattle and growing rice and citrus fruits. What they don't have is electricity and running water. Abbas Gudiabi has a vision to generate electricity for the villages using clean solar power instead of diesel powered generators that pollute the environment. <laughs> Gudiabi goes to see the local medicine man. He hopes the powerful and influential member of the community will give the idea his blessing. I'm a very old man. I've experienced many things. Solar energy is good for the future. It's good for our children. The stars look favorably on this project. It will improve life in the village. Three villages already have solar energy. This is a pilot project, a way of showing the local people how it works and how effective it really is. The solar kiosk is located right in the middle of the village. There are solar cells on the roof, producing electricity for some 500 people. The technical equipment is inside. Three German solar companies provided the funds for the kiosk and the technology. The materials are robust, designed with the African climate in mind. The lamps are shockproof and watertight. Not that the villagers are receiving anything for free. The solar energy is sold to consumers to recoup the construction costs. If people get something for free, it has no value, because they're not paying for it. That's when people stop taking care of things and they break down. That's why we decided on a kiosk that would rent items instead of giving things away. And that's economically viable in the long term. When the solar battery runs down, customers bring in their lamps and exchange them for one that's been charged up. It costs around 40 euro cents to recharge a lamp for eight hours of light. Cell phone and radio batteries can also be recharged. The solar lamps replace the expensive and environmentally unsound oil and kerosene lamps. Villagers have recognized the potential of solar energy and come forward with more and more new ideas. The women would like solar cookers and solar powered pumps for their wells. It's all technically feasible. With sufficient solar technology in these villages, where there's no major industry, we can limit the consumption of fossil fuels and reduce a village's CO2 emissions to practically zero. The solar technician has installed the largest collecting unit on the roof of the local hospital. If it's properly serviced, it can supply electricity for the next 20 years and replace a large diesel power generator. 
The hospital does draw electricity from the national grid, but it's expensive, and power outages are frequent. The doctor says that although the initial outlay is greater for solar cells, thanks to the African sun, they then generate electricity at no cost. In the event of a power outage, the solar unit takes over, and this can be crucial for the treatment of patients. It means that life-saving drugs can be stored at the required temperatures and not spoil in the heat. Ziguinchor is the largest city in the province of Casamarance, with a population of some 50,000. CO2 emissions across the entire African continent are considerably less than those of Germany alone. If solar technology gains a foothold here, energy could be supplied in a completely different way in Africa in the future. People here use electricity from the national grid, but long power outages are a daily occurrence. The owner of this tailor shop would rather switch to solar energy. It's just that the legal situation is still unclear as to whether solar energy can be generated by the private sector. The national electricity company still has a monopoly. Solar technician Abbas Gudiabi is hopeful that these legal restrictions will soon be revised, giving him the green light to bring clean electricity to the villages of Senegal. <laughs>